This is Twit. So at the EFF, you've been a digital rights activist reporting on Syrian malware. You fought against SOPA and PIPA. How does this lead you to be such a huge ag ag adv advocate against stalkerware? Well, uh, part of what I do at EFF's Threat Lab, uh, which I run, is uh, we have a sort of concentration on protecting vulnerable populations. So I started by spending a lot of time uh, protecting journalists and activists from online threats, uh, specifically threats by governments and law enforcement. And it became very clear to me over the years that uh, we needed to have sort of a broader view of what constitutes a vulnerable population. And this includes uh, women and uh, LBGTQ populations and people who are in uh, domestic abuse situations, and very often the kind of malware that I see on their uh, on their devices uh, is this stalkerware, which you can install if you have physical access to the device, um, but which is often installed also with, uh, with the username and password. And a lot of uh, AV companies refused for a long time to consider this to be uh, malware because they assumed that if you have the username and password for a uh, for an account, that you have legitimate access to the account. And so I had to sit them down and say, I don't think you understand how abuse works. Uh, so that's one of the things that I'm trying to change right now. So you sent out a tweet um, basically looking for um, people that might uh, be experiencing this kind of abuse. And what was the response? Well, specifically, uh, what happened was I, I did many years of uh, security research on uh, nation state malware. And it turned out that one of the people that I had spent all of my time doing research with was a serial rapist. And um, in 2018, an article came out uh, with an interview with one of his victims. And the victim said that the reason she had not reported him for many years was because she was really scared and she was scared that he would hack her devices and he had threatened to do so. So I became furious and I did what all angry people do on the internet. I tweeted and uh, what I tweeted was that if you're a woman who's been sexually abused by a hacker who threatened to compromise her devices, you could come and contact me and I would make sure they got a proper examination. And so it looks like it's been re retweeted almost 10,000 times. Um, you got, so, so you then began to work directly with these women. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I spent about a year and a half uh, working directly with, and, and to be clear, not just women. Um, I want to be clear that abuse is not just something that men do to women. Um, I saw uh, women abusing men. I uh, talked to people who were in same-sex relationships with abuse. Um, so, uh, But the overwhelming major majority of them were, uh, were women who came to me, and the overwhelming majority of abusers were men. So you were recently uh, profiled in Wired and just uh, they wrote about just how much time this was taking and how um, you eventually realized that although you are a superhero, you could not solve this <laughs> problem. Uh, you didn't realize you were a superhero. I realized that after reading <laughs> this, but uh, that you couldn't do it on your own. So tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about what you're doing now. All right. So um, I started receiving a lot of messages. I was receiving uh, somewhere between, you know, zero and like 20 or 30 messages a day. And I was, you know, uh, I saw a real cross section of the population. So I saw people who, uh, who were being scammed, who weren't really in danger, people who uh, had their accounts compromised. And I saw people who had their devices compromised. And device compromise was definitely not uh, the most common problem that I saw, but it was also associated with the worst abuses that I saw. Now, when people have their accounts compromised, there's advice that I can already give them. I can tell people with, with compromised accounts, change all your passwords, use a password manager, use uh, strong and unique passwords, and use the strongest method of two-factor authentication uh, that you're comfortable with. And that will take care of like 99% of the problems that I see. Um, but 
if people have uh, spouseware or stalkerware installed on their devices, if their devices have been compromised, uh, I didn't have a lot of advice that I could give them aside from, you know, send me your device so that I can get it a, a forensic examination. And that is, that takes a lot of time. Um, and so one of the things that I did was I went around and I looked at whether or not there were any AV companies that were currently uh, marking this stuff as malicious. And it turned out almost no one. It turned out that that was extremely rare behavior. And one of the reasons for that was, as I said before, that uh, antivirus companies consider some of the uses of these products to be legitimate and therefore marking them as malicious would be bad. Um, so I went to a bunch of companies and I talked to them about what I wanted them to do. And the first company that I got on board was Kaspersky. So a couple weeks ago, Kaspersky announced that they were going to start taking, uh, spouseware and stalkerware seriously. And the, they were going to start marking it as, uh, as malicious when they found it. And that's a really big step forward. Uh, and interestingly enough, uh, about a week later, uh, Lookout followed up with a uh, with a blog post in which they said, "We have always taken this stuff seriously, and you can also install Lookout if you um, if you're worried that you have one of these malicious programs on your um, on your device." Uh, so now there are options. So we've got two companies on board, and I'm calling on all the other AV companies to uh, to join the club. So are you mostly talking about um, cell phones, like uh, Android phones? That the, that. Um, <laughs> I'm talking about uh, tablets. Um, I mean, also, I, I definitely saw uh, people with compromised, uh, you know, laptops and PCs. Um, but by far, the most abusive form of compromise is compromising somebody's phone. Um, because you keep so much important information about your life on your phone because your location is constantly being reported, because all of your text messages and your phone calls and your photos uh, are all located on your phone. Your list of contacts is on your phone. Um, you log into all of your social media accounts from your phone. And so access to your phone is very much like access to your mind. And uh, that's incredibly invasive. And I wanted to be able to do something about that. So you said most of the, I mean, it's much easier to get this kind of spouseware installed on an Android phone, but it's not impossible to do it on an iPhone. And you've suggested uh, some changes that Apple could also make to, to make this um, clearer to people who might have spouseware on their phones. Yes. So right now, uh, if you want to install this kind of spouseware on an iPhone, uh, you need to be running a fairly outdated version of the operating system because uh, usually these uh, phones need to be jailbroken first. So I think the last available public untethered jailbreak is from uh, iOS 9 point something. Um, but there are other things that these... Uh, uh, that these products do. First of all, I would like Apple to take a look at whether or not they can make it impossible to um, to covertly jailbreak a phone, which would do a lot for taking care of, of this one particular uh, vector. Uh, and it's not entirely clear that it's possible because you you get into the problem of you know can God build a, or can God create a rock so heavy he can't lift it? Uh, once you've jailbroken the phone, you have root on the phone. You can make it do anything you want, mm. uh, and uh, making changes that you can't change with that kind of access uh, may not be possible. Um, but I'd like them to give it a try. Uh, additionally, uh, the other vector that these um, these products use in order to uh, install themselves on iPhones is uh, they pull iCloud backups. So I'm going to be having a chat with Apple about how to better protect iCloud backups, even if uh, somebody already has access to the uh, to somebody's Apple ID. And you said even uh, apps that are built into the phone, like Find My uh, Friends, people can use that uh, as a form of abuse. Yes, people use Find My Phone, people use Find My Friends. Um, the good news about that stuff is that it's uh, it's transparent. Mm -hmm. So you know when somebody has added your device to their, uh, uh, or sorry, has added their device to uh, to your Apple ID, and you can go check that. And if there's another device there that doesn't belong there, you can kick it off, uh, which is something that you cannot currently do with stalkerware or spouseware. So I decided that I would uh, I would start with the stuff that has 
no immediate signs <laughs> and try to create some immediate signs that people can look for. <laughs> 